What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all. My energy is kind of down today. Yeah, same. Um, And I felt like, out of just, like, respect for everybody and, of course, Kobe Bryant's family, I just kind of wanted to dedicate this episode to him. Right. Um, I've never hit the fact that I'm not a huge sports fan, but you don't have to be a sports fan to know about the greatness of Kobe Bryant. Of course, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's legendary. So I just wanted to really talk about um, why, as people, does somebody have to die for us all to, like, start reaching out to people and appreciating people? Like, why is it always do we wait for something tragic to happen? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like, because people just never be really thinking shit like that can happen. Right. You know what I mean? Or that it will happen. Right. Especially to somebody like... On that level, I right. guess. I don't know. It's I mean, crazy. Of course, we're all humans, but it's like, it's Kobe Bryant. Yeah. He's like a superhero. Like, we all grew up, like, watching him. Like, he got uh, drafted when he was 17, Marin, is that right? I don't know if he was 17, but he got drafted straight out of high school. Straight out of high school. So yeah. he was, like, 17, 18. And yeah. Like so it's like we literally watched him grow up right before our eyes. Like, I think when yeah. we were all young, we all kind of, like, the guys wanted to be him and the girls had a crush on him. You remember when he took Brandy to prom? I was just about to say that. Like, he took Moesha to prom. Yeah. It was like Moesha. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like somebody like that. They're really like a superhero, and you feel like they're going to live forever because we saw him break his finger and play basketball games. We saw him be sick and play games. We saw people break his nose and him put that mask on. You just think somebody like that is invincible. So for something like this to happen is just kind of like, whoa. Yeah, I mean, and I was just saying yesterday, like, you know, when the Nipsey stuff happened last year, that shit was really fucked up. And I think that affected a lot of people, too. But then this situation, um, it's just even more crazy because his daughter was involved, you know? Right, right. That's what was really kind of crazy. Let me say, I wore my little tacky shirt. I used to have a shirt in college. It was just like a little, you know how you just wear buy little stuff and wear it to bed? Mm-hmm. But I just really wanted to wear this for Gigi because one of my favorite Kobe moments was, I think he was on, like, Jimmy Kimmel or something doing an interview and he was saying how like people would always walk up to him and be like man you need to have a boy you need to have a junior oh yeah and every time she was with him she would be like no like I got this like yeah. I'm gonna make sure the legacy keeps going because she was super talented right like I was like watching clips of her yesterday and she played just like him oh really like they had the same mannerisms on the yeah court. So this is why I wore this shirt. Just, you know, because do it like a girl. Oh, so I thought you just wanted G- to wear this shit. No, no, <laughs> no. I had a shot. I'll do it for little Gigi. But like I said, I just feel like as people, I really want us to start appreciating people every day. Yeah. Like, I hate the, like, I'm not trying to be funny, and I'm glad that people reached out to me yesterday. But I had a lot of people, like, reaching out to me yesterday and been like, hey, you know, I just want you to let you know I love you and, you know, I fuck with you, this and that. And I'm like, that's cool, and I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I feel like that's stuff that we should do all the time. All the time anyway. Because it's like, you you just never but know. But I feel like that's easier said than done because people be just having so much shit going on in their personal life. You I, mean, know what that, I, mean? I mean, that's true, but like I said, I don't think people really try to not reach out to people or check in on them, you know, for long periods of time. Sometimes it just be it happens up like that. that but way. I will say I have been a person like ever sitting like it still took a situation like that for happen. Like when the Nipsey Hustle situation happened, you know, I was a big Nipsey fan. So that mm-hmm. stuff really kind of affected me. But I always make sure I don't really go, like, a week or two without talking to my friends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always try to make sure to check in. So I feel like life is too short for you to be going months without checking in on your people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just can't can't do that. Because, like I said, like, you could wake up and it could be gone. And then it's like... With traveling, you know, you're trying to just get to point A to point B. It's not like this man was sick. We just saw him Saturday at, you know, I think he was at the LeBron game, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was at the LeBron game. So it's like he was in perfect health. So when a death like this happens, like somebody getting shot or somebody getting a wreck, a car wreck, a plane crash, and it's so unexpected, it's like... What the hell? Yeah, when I seen the video footage of it, like, what happened? Well, I heard that that wasn't... Oh, that wasn't it? Yeah, you know how people are. I heard that that wasn't the... Because I was like, but even still, just thinking about... 
something like that happening. Like because you, know, you have to realize the reason that they got in a wreck because they said um, it was it, foggy. they hit a mount, yeah, yeah, because it was foggy. In that video, it was no fog. I don't think that that was the correct mm-hmm. video, but I just thought it was weird that people were retweeting it and sharing it anyway. But, That's true. Yeah, it was a little, but yeah, I don't think that was the correct um, video. But no, like, um, like I was saying though, I just feel like you know what go through your mind was. I mean, we we don't know because. That hasn't ever happened to us. But right. I'm just like, what would go through your mind while that's happening? Because it's like, you don't even, like, you know you can't do Anything. nothing. And, you know, I think what kind of comforted me is just to know that him and her were together in their last moments. You know what I mean? Like, you have to realize, you can tell, like, she was a daddy's girl. So if there's anybody that she wanted to be with in her last moments of life, I would definitely say, like, it. You know, I was glad that she was at least with her protector and somebody that she looked up to and wanted to be like, ooh, it's so sad. It is. It is really, really sad. That's why it's kind of like I got shit to say, but then I'm just still kind of like, it's just hard, and it's hard to talk about. It really is. Um, And I, I, could, I can't help but think in these situations about, like, my family and my mom sometimes because um, I always talk about how my dad passed away when I, I was two and I believe my sister was five. Yeah. And she's three years older than me, so... It's like I think about Vanessa a lot and I was thinking about Lauren London a lot. And then my mom because, yeah. you know, when you have your partner pass away, you can grieve, but you have kids to raise still. Like she has a seven-month-old. I said month the old. same thing. I said imagine how hard that shit is to like still have to get up every day. You're trying to grieve through this mm-hmm. situation and then you still got to get up every day and still be a mom. Be a mom. Like my mom, we were living in California at the time and – she had to pack up the house by, basically by herself. Like, my dad's brother, my uncle had came to help her, and she had to just pick everything up and move us down to Orange because she didn't have nothing. Like, that was all. She wasn't really working. He was, like, the breadwinner of the family, the same yeah. thing. So it was like she had to get up and get her shit together because she had two people that were dependent on her, you know? So I just I yeah. feel for Vanessa, you know what I'm saying? And then, and because I couldn't imagine losing my sister. So I just thinking about, you know, the girls losing their, their sister is just, it's just hard. Yeah. Because, you know, you try to put yourself in people's shoes, but you really just can't. Yeah. Because, I mean, we ain't never been through nothing like right, that. Right, right. You know like I, I mean? said, I have no memories of that. I was two right, years old. You right. know what I'm saying? You but were really young. I was really, really young. But I don't know. I just feel like I really want us as people just to do better. Like I said, I feel like. We, we shouldn't have to wait till tragedy happens to reach out to people and tell people that you're sorry. Because you know what? I'm not going to lie. I have my moments where I freak out on people and I say mean and bad things to them. Mm-hmm. Like, but I have something in me that I won't allow, like, myself to go to sleep. Or, you know, like some like I told you Saturday night, before this had all happened, I had got into it with one of my exes. Yeah. And I had said something really, really, really messed up to him. <laughs> and I immediately... I'm just laughing because that shit was kind of funny. I, it, it, was, <laughs> it, it was in the moment because I was drunk, but it was just really yeah. messed up. So I immediately called him back and was like, okay, I don't mean it like that, but I still don't like you. But I don't want nothing bad to happen to you. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like there's just something in me. Like, me and my mom got into it on Friday. And I just, I don't like arguing with people. I just never can go to sleep. Like, if I say something or we're getting into it. You got into it with somebody else this week, too. But we ain't going to talk about that. Who else did I get in? Oh, <laughs> well, honestly, <laughs> never mind. We're not going to address that. We're not. We're not going to address that. But, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time with it because I don't want to get emotional. Yeah. Um, but, like I said, I do feel like we all need to cherish people while they're here. Um, big shout out to Kobe and his family, you know, like, like, I don't know what else to say. It's just kind of like, I was shocked. And then let me say this real quick before we move on. Anybody out there that works in journalism (laughs) or works with social media, all y'all care about is being the first to say something. The fact that we were all sitting there, what did Rick Fox even have to do with this? Yeah, I was. that's what I was trying to figure out, too. I'm like, where the fuck did this information Talking even about come from? All four girls were on the plane with yeah. him. Like, so much bogus information was coming out. And I feel like all of y'all should be ashamed of People yourself. People was under Rick Fox pictures, like, saying RIP. I'm like... Right. I feel like it's very irresponsible yeah. for these um, news outlets to just be releasing information because they want to be first. Yeah. And, you know, like, I will say... I do have respect for like ESPN because they weren't tweeting anything or saying anything until they had like facts. 
like hard facts. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. outlets like that, I have more respect for. But all these people just being like, "Oh, Rick Fox was reportedly on the plane." Confirmed. Rick Rick Fox was on the plane. Confirmed. His four dollars were on the plane with him. Like y'all are confirming stuff that y'all are seeing other people tweet. So I and feel, where did it stem from? And where did it stem from? And I just feel like as people that do media, like you know, I feel like yeah. we just need to do better. And the fact of the matter is. The plane crash happened, and two hours later, it was TMZ was reporting it. I don't know how true this is, but they're saying that a lot of his extended family have found out via TMZ. Oh, so wow. uh, that's another thing. I feel like you need to make sure the family is at least notified, so they're not turning on the fucking TV and seeing that their relative is dead. I feel yeah, like media, that's a terrible way to find out that somebody close to you died. I'd be damned if I like get on Twitter and I see people being like, oh, R.I.P. Dre and Nicole. And I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like yeah. the the media and the hunger for like money and just being that network that says it first has just turned y'all into fucking monsters. I just think our generation is just very insensitive. Very too. insensitive. Because I was like, looking like at really LeBron's insensitive. comments and people were being so cruel in LeBron's comments just because he hadn't posted nothing yet. But, this man is grieving. But even how they posted that video of him from being in the airport and he was, like, crying. It's like, did y'all really feel like y'all needed to send that to right, the shade room right. or TMZ people or whoever? Are, like, he was crying. Right. I feel like people have wrapped their whole lives around social media. Like, I'm not going to lie. If something happened to anybody close to me, I'm not running to Twitter. I'm not running to Instagram. I'm going to be grieving. So the yeah. fact that all these people were in LeBron's comments talking about you didn't care about him. You probably set him up for this to happen. Why don't you say something? You call this your brother. Y'all are sick. Y'all are really sick. People and I need y'all to understand that. It's hell. I think people just get so wrapped up in these people's lives and y'all don't understand. Like, I think this situation made people realize like these are still human beings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're all human. People grieve differently. Some people, it makes them feel better by, you know, talking to their fans and, you know, like, letting people know how they feel. And some people can hold it together enough to compose a message. Some people can't. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you don't know these people personally. And I just feel like we just need to do better as people. Because it was just a lot of, it was a lot of stupid, crazy tweets. And, you know, the conspiracy theorists are coming out. And saying their 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 things, and I just feel like it's just completely insensitive. Then people like arguing on the internet over this shit. It's like somebody just died. Right. Like two people just lost their life, and y'all going back and forth. Nine people well, lost their yeah, life. nine yeah. people. But it's like y'all really on here going back and forth about the shit. Like, right. what's wrong with you? Right. I just feel like people have personal things going on in their life, and their escape is the internet. And yeah. Y'all need to seek help, seek therapy. Because I seen a lot of tweets yesterday. I'm like, hey, y'all are some sick ass bitches. And that's the nicest way I can say it, honestly. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to keep the, I don't know, just out of respect. Like I said, this is not, y'all know this is not how poor minds usually is. But like I said, I feel like this is something that has just, you know, just affected everybody. So I'm not going to lie. This I mean, is going to be Everybody shook. Yeah, this is just really shook for me. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. I feel like one thing that y'all respect about our show is that we never try to be fake or we never try to be, like, something that we're not. And I feel like I just wasn't in the mood today. Like, I'm not in the mood to be, like, laughing and joking around. Like, I'm really not. Yeah. So I feel like that would be unfair to me to be sitting on this mic and being fake and talking about this and that when I'm just not in the mood for it. Um so, but I know, like, the show has to go on, and I know y'all look for. I look forward to Wednesdays as well yeah, for too. the episodes to drop, but, you know, like I said, um, I do want to move on and still do uh, the Bop of the Week. Do you have a Bop of the Week this week? No. I'm not oh, gonna, I do. What? I do. But it's not a new song. So, I know you don't like Fabulous. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> but he had dropped this song a, kind of a while ago, mm -hmm. and it was called, like, the Black Mamba Freestyle. Okay. And it was about Kobe. Yeah, yeah. I and, seen like, Cass had posted that Yeah, yesterday. so, like, it's kind of been resurfacing because of this situation. Right. But it's a really good song, though. Okay, so. well, shout out to Fab for that. You get, like, a half a point. So I am you have dead. Like out you of are so people. annoying. <laughs> um, well, my bop of the week is an old song as well because it's just um, it's a sad song, but I feel like the lyrics are very true. So my song is called "Heaven" by Beyonce. I think we all know that song. Oh yeah. So that's gonna be my song dedicated to you know all nine people that were on that helicopter because you know sometimes you just need a good ballad 
to sit there and cry to and just get it out. And I yeah. definitely listened to that song a few times last night and let the tears fall just because I just think about, you can't help but think about your nephew. like, ooh, hold on, I don't want to cry. You can't help but think about your family. And I was thinking about, like, my nephew, you know what I'm saying? And, like, my sister's pregnant right now. Mm -hmm. And just to think if, like, something happened to my brother-in-law or, you know, something happened to Jackson's dad, like, how they would have to grow up without him. Yeah. You know, so I just feel like this is a, I don't know, I just feel like we all just need to appreciate life. So Absolutely. Um, Let's move on again. Sorry, y'all. I'm just really emotional today. And Girl, I it's about okay. that time of the month, child, too. Um, it is okay. So we are a little backed up in the Ask Poor Minds area. So we do still <laughs> Y'all been really sending that. the questions Y'all been sending the questions, so we cannot skip this week. Um, so we are going to answer y'all's questions and give y'all the advice the best we can. So I'm going to let you go ahead and go first. Okay. So the first one is from Brittany Winter. She said, hey, y'all. Hey, ladies, me again. I wrote y'all a while ago about booty pleasure with my baby daddy and how he was sort of resisting that shit. Anyways, that's not the point of this message. Long story short, I'm deciding to cut his ass off because he's just not doing what I need him to do for me. Drea, last week you said you decided to cut yo man off, and then later your statement was, your statement said something along the lines of you're hoping to get what you want in the long run. Did you mean by cutting him off you're hoping to get what you want from him or fix whatever the issue is between y'all or am I completely off base? Do y'all think that cutting a man off has the potential to make him appreciate you the way he needed to when y'all were fucking around? Can your absence make that nigga appreciate your presence? Um, what is y'all thoughts? As always, I love y'all and keep killing the damn game. That's actually funny that that was the real question because that kind of goes into what we were talking to today. Yeah. About, like, not appreciating people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, yeah, absolutely. I feel like sometimes you have to, if somebody's not treating you right or doing what they're supposed to do, you need to show them what their life is like without you in there. And sometimes it's better and sometimes it's worse. But either way it goes, if you're not, if somebody's not showing you that they're appreciative of your time, of your love, of everything, I feel like you definitely have to cut people off for sure. Like 100%. Yeah, you have to. Like if you don't, at some point you like literally don't have no, where's your self-respect kind of exactly. to a certain extent. I think we all go through shit with people, you know what I mean? And even we have probably done stuff to people in the past, you know what I mean? But like, I don't know. I just feel like... Like, if somebody not treating you right, you got to, like Lex said, let them see what their life going to be like without you. And then sometimes people do get their shit together. Sometimes right. they do. Right. And then they come back and they treat you better. Then sometimes it just don't be meant to be. But you got to be really willing to, like, take their risk. Right. And I feel like when I be doing that shit with people, I really be like, like, I kind of want you to come back. Yeah. But I got to teach you a lesson. But I have to teach you a lesson. But then also I'm prepared for if you don't. Right. That's why I made the decision to cut your ass off. And like we were just talking about, like, life is too short to be trying to... I'm not about to spend my days trying to make you love me or trying to make you appreciate me or yeah. trying to make you see that I'm good to you. I'm not doing that. You're either going to appreciate me while I'm here or I'm just going to leave, you know, and be with somebody who does appreciate me. So I definitely think, like, it's a saying, like, what, absence makes, makes the heart grow fonder. Mm -hmm. And that's very true. Sometimes I feel like you do have to cut people off for them to realize, okay, you know. Now, some people... They'll get you back and they'll act right for like a week or two and then they go back to their old ways. Sometimes people will really change and really see. I just it it just depends on the person. I mean, and that just goes back to me just feeling like if you're not getting what you want from a situation, because different people want different things mm -hmm. in relationships and stuff like that. If you're not getting what you want though, you shouldn't have to relax your standards to fuck with that person. Right. I agree. You know, 100%. so I'm kinda like I said, I'm glad you that was a good question. Thank you, Brittany. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't know. I'm not gonna read this letter because I just don't want to get into a conversation about relationships right now and all that good stuff. Okay. So we'll read that next week. Okay. Um I don't have an item of the week this week either. Like I said, I apologize, y'all. I'm just like I don't know. I just feel like I kinda wanna go home and lay in the bed. <laughs> And just kind of be sad today. I feel like and then the know, weather kind of gloomy. The weather is gloomy today. I'm um I'm not even. I don't want to drink too much because I don't want to be in. Look, I'm I'm very dramatic. You we know, haven't especially. drunk anything. We haven't drunk anything. But I'm not in the mood to drink right now. Like Jazz is at the house, my uh, my roommate, and I just feel like you know we about to just chill and just have a day. I just think we need a day today, and I feel like that's okay. I think 
we one thing we talked about on the phone yesterday is like we're human and you know we do this show for us and we love y'all as well but we'll never sit on this show and be fake like if I'm not in the mood I'm just not in the mood y'all and I'm not gonna lie yeah but we so, still had to put it out. We still had to put it so. out. And like I said, I did want to, you know, talk about him and talk about his legacy. And like I said, we all, I'm not even a sports person, but we all grew up watching Kobe on TV, like I said. And um, if anybody's out there that works in media, please just do better. Like, we all just need to do better at the end of the day. Um, anybody that's affiliated with anybody on TMZ or anything, y'all just please just do better. That's That's yeah. the best way I can put it. Um, I agree. You have anything else you want to add, sister? Um, no, not really. Me not, me not really either. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Like I said, we're gonna keep it cute and short today. We will be back. I'll be back and better next week. I promise y'all. Y'all can see I'm going through it. Natural mommy. I ain't got no nails on. It, it's just been, it's just been a week. Okay. Yeah. So, um, once again, it's your girl Lex P. And it's your girl Dre Nicole. And we will see y'all next week. Bye y'all. Bye.